So we worked through an example of solving a system of equations by using the Gaussian elimination or the row echelon form in the last example. Again, this is where it had ones in the main diagonal, zero below it, and then it didn't matter what we had here up above because we could use back substitution to figure that out. Okay, we're going to take this and we're going to do it one more step, and this is called Gauss-Jordan elimination or reduced row echelon form. And that's a lot of words there, so mostly I'm going to summarize this and I'm going to call it RREF, reduced row echelon form. And so what our goal is to get ones on the main diagonal with a zero below it, but we also want a zero in the opposite place as well. If I can get it into this format, and if I were to put this back into a system of equations, this would be a 1x plus a 0y is equal to whatever answer I have for my x value. A 0x plus a 1y equals whatever answer I have for my y value, meaning that tells me x would be this answer and y would be the other answer, meaning I wouldn't have to finagle with that back substitution. If I can get it in this format, boom, I'm done. I've got my answer there. Okay. So notice what we see over here on the left with the ones on the diagonal, like I keep talking about, and zeros every other place. This has a specific name. This is called the identity matrix. So our goal is to get that identity matrix on the left. If we have that, then we have our answers over here on the right, and we don't have to do any other finagling with the systems of equations. So I have another example of this. And we're going to solve this by using the RREF method, reduced row echelon method, or the Gauss-Jordan method. So again, our goal is to get ones here, zeros every other place, and then whatever we end up with is our answers. Okay, so let's see if we can do this one without actually changing it back and forth between equation method and whatnot. We're just going to keep it in the number sense here. So I have a 2x plus 1y is equal to 1. A 3x minus 6y is equal to 4. Okay, now again, my method of preference is to get a 1 on the top left where this 2 is. Most of the time to get a 1, I use option number 2. I multiply one row by a non-zero constant which usually means that I divide that row by whatever number I'm trying to get rid of in front of my x. Okay, so in this example, that usually means I would take my row 1 and I would divide it by 2. So if I did that, my 2 divided by 2 would give me 1, and then I would have a 1 half here and a 1 half there. And so that gives me the 1 right where I want it. So that's me using the typical row operation that I would suggest. Now, the problem with this one is that when I did that, it gave me fractions over here. Now, fractions are definitely okay in matrices. It doesn't mean that we can't use them. It just means most people prefer not to do them. So sometimes we might see if there's a different way to do it, a more creative way. Well, in this particular example, I also notice that I have a 3 right below it, and I notice the difference between 3 and 2 is 1. So instead of me doing it this way here, let me see if I can do it a different way. Let me just take my row 2 and subtract my row 1, and that's going to be my new row 1. Now, I can do this. This is an actual OK process. This is basically me adding a multiple of one row to another row. I'm just not multiplying row and row by anything, or I'm multiplying it by one, if that's the case. So if I did this, that would give me 3 minus 2, which is 1, negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7, and 4 minus 1, which gives me 3. Now my row 2, it still stays the same. And now I have it still using a legitimate operation, but now I don't have any fractions involved. So again, instead of using the same exact processes when I tell you to, see if there's more 
creative ways to go about it, and then it might make it a little bit easier on yourself. Okay, so I've got my one on the top left. The next thing I want to do is I want to make this three into a zero. Now, what I typically recommend is option number three. When you eliminate something, you multiply the other row by it, by a number, and you add it to the row that you're trying to eliminate. So I'm going to multiply row one by the thing that's going to cancel out this three, which happens to be a negative three, add it to my row two, and that's going to be my new row two. So if you need to do scratch work, that's fine. I suggest it so you don't do simple mistakes. So if I take this one and I multiply it by a negative three, negative seven times negative three gives me 21. 3 times negative 3 gives me 9. So that is this right here, row 1 times negative 3. Then I add that to row 2. So I add this, my scratch work, and I add this right here. That becomes my new row 2, meaning my row 1 stays the same at 1, negative 7, 3. And then I add these two highlighted rows. And that should cancel out where I wanted this zero to be. Negative 3 plus 3 gives me 0. 21 minus 6 gives me 15. Negative 9 plus 4 gives me negative 5. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is, if I'm following the same method, is now get a 1 where this 15 is. Typically, when I get a, want to get a 1, I divide that row by that number. So I'm going to take my row 2, and I'm going to divide it by 15. And that's going to be my new row 2. So notice I switched up my notation a little bit here. Whenever I use a lowercase r, that means my old row, this is what I see in this step. Whenever I use a capital case r, that's going to be my new row. So my old row 2 divided by 15 is going to be put into my new row 2. So that gives me... My row 1 is exactly the same. 0, 15 divided by 15 gives me 1. Negative 5 divided by 15 gives me negative 1 third. Now, I do have a fraction here, but that's my final y answer. So there's nothing that I can do to simplify that answer. It just stays. It's got to stay as a fraction. Okay, my very last step is to get a 0 where this negative 7 is. So that's the difference between my last example, the Gaussian elimination. I stopped here. Now with the Gauss-Jordan elimination or with the RREF method, we want to go ahead and finish this out. So I want to get rid of this negative 7. Whenever I want to get a 0, I multiply a different row by something to cancel it out. Okay, so I need to compare it to the number below it, which is 1. So that means I'm going to take my row 2, I'm going to multiply it by 7, and then I'm going to add that to row 1, and I'm going to replace that in my new row 1. So my row 2 times 7, 0 times 7 is 0, 1 times 7 is 7, and negative 1 third times 7 is negative 7 thirds. And then I add these two rows here, and that's going to be my new row 1. So my row 2 stays the same. So I'm just going to copy it down. And then my new row 1. 1 plus 0 gives me 1, which is good because I have that 1 there. I need to keep it as a 1. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And 3 minus 7 thirds. That's the same thing as 9 thirds minus 7 thirds, or that gives me 2 thirds. Now, this matrix is exactly how I wanted it. I wanted my identity matrix on the left with my ones on the diagonals and my zeros every place else. And then when I put this back in the system of equations, that gives me my exact answer, where it tells me that x is equal to 2 thirds and my y is equal to negative 1 third. And so I have my point of intersection between these two system of equations here. And you're always more than welcome to graph this on your graphing calculator to double check and confirm that this is, in fact, your point of intersection. Okay, so we've done this example, this Gauss-Jordan elimination, or RREF method, but we did it when we had two variables and two unknowns. 
Well, we saw in the last section, but we can actually crank this up a notch, meaning we can do it with three dimensions. And so that's what we're going to do in the next video, is we're going to solve this three-dimensional system of equations by using the matrix method.